Hello, everybody, and welcome to Around the Realm. I am here with Scott, our editor for Season 1 and Season 2 of Realms and Roleplay. Scott, it's so great to have you here. Hello. Uh, well, uh, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if you wouldn't mind, for our newer viewers that may not have been here for Season 1, um, would you mind just giving us a little bit of an intro about yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm Scott Segrin. I'm a, a multi-hyphenate film person that does pretty much everything. Uh, and I was the editor for season one and uh, I'm also the editor for season two of Realms and Roleplay. And uh, that's that's me. Um, I'm sure there's probably more details I could fill in, but uh, I don't. I, I hate talking about myself. <laughs> Well, that's too bad because we're here to talk about you. <laughs> I know, I know. So, uh, so how did you meet Carmen and get onboarded for this? Basically, I got introduced to Carmen through uh, another editor friend of mine, Noah, and uh, they were doing college humor stuff, uh, and they did some of the, um, I want to say, what was it called? It's like really, it's like a really noted, notable one that I can't, the name of it is escaping me right now. Oh, good. Uh, I think it was, it's the, whatever the one where they're now, they have like an animated show on Amazon called Vox Machina. Oh, um, oh Critical Role. Critical Role. There we go. Yes, he, yes, yes, yes. Uh, the, they, sorry, Noah worked on Critical Role. And I think Noah got reached out to for that and was very busy with the, the project load that they had at the time. So, uh, referred me and uh me and Carmen talked and I have plenty of experience editing just generally and also worked on uh we had our own D D podcast gameplay role play show that we were doing at the time and I was helping editing those so this is not a far cry from that um and that's that's how I came on to uh realms and role play oh that's so, awesome yeah. So uh, how did you find your passion for like film and editing, just like being a creative in a sense? Uh, you know, I, I was thinking about this, this question earlier a little bit. Um, I, don't, I don't really know exactly how I found it. I've more or less always had it. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, just always loved movies and shows and telling stories. And uh, I just generally love telling a good story in whatever medium I can. Uh, but film is definitely my favorite. So I don't know, it's just kind of always been there. And I've always wanted to do it. So I, I kind of always have um, everything I can to learn as much as I can about film or do as much as I can in the film field. And that's that's basically been the whole point from from day one. So yeah, I don't know exactly how I found it. Kind of always been there. Mm -hmm. Did you go to uh, schooling at all or any chat or anything? I went to film school uh, at the New York Film Academy, but I did their intensive program and I only did a year. Um, otherwise, it's been a lot of just onset real world working experience. Uh, not for lack of trying to get into different film school. I think uh, I was deterred from taking uh film courses when i started i started at the university of long beach way back when and uh i thought had knocked out all my ge requirements in high school that's why i took all the extra classes only to find out none of them counted and because uh -huh. of that i couldn't actually do any film courses when i started at school which i found pointless <laughs> wow. um so yeah eventually i wound up in new york film academy for about uh their intensive one-year program learned learned a lot of good stuff uh if anybody's curious is it worth it to go to film school that's a tough question to answer uh i would say it it is it can be good to go depending on where you go and what they're covering the the best thing that we learned from our film school is how to make a movie with no money outside of that i'd be hard pressed to say that it's worth the cost of admission yeah. but that's that's my opinion you no, can learn a lot yeah. just in the field from other people just just as much or as well as you might in a classroom yeah i i agree with that because before when i was trying to figure out my path i wanted to go for screenwriting or something like film related but i was so nervous to tie down to school because i didn't really feel like 
that it mattered in a sense. Right. You know what I mean, I did New York Film Academy, but I only attended for a day. <laughs> And then I left and I feel like I've just, you know, I've been able to make connections on my own and yep. get that on that experience in the field and experience with your peers. I have found so much more helpful than I think a school could have ever taught me. Yeah. I mean, the only upside would be, you know, for your cost of admission, you get access to gear that you might not normally have access to. So take advantage of that if you're going to go. I mean, check that stuff out on the weekends, even when you don't have an assigned project, because it's in your it's in your best interest. But uh, yeah, that's yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Film school. <laughs> Film school. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned tabletop before, and uh, so I assume you have played tabletop games before. Right? I have. I have. I've played a lot. I don't know if I've played all. Uh, I've played a lot of D&D over the years. Mm -hmm. um, I've played the Genesis system once or twice, uh, a little bit of the cyberpunk system. I uh, very recently, because of friends who have gotten into it, so I've messed around with uh, Battletech. That's a new one for me. It's like Mech Warrior, I think mm -hmm. is what it is. Um, Arkham Horror, Betrayal Legacy, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've played most of it. Uh, oh. It's really fun. I think D&D is probably still my favorite. But uh, yeah. A lot, a lot of experience with games. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that people have like a particular preference. Either they really like cyberpunk or they really like D and D. And you said you've played cyberpunk. Did you ever play the uh, jump starter kit that we're playing with this season? I do think that was what I started with. Oh, okay. um, I don't know if we ever finished that game though. To be fair, I've had a lot of games where it was like one session, and then you can't get people back together, so another session never happens. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure it was the jump starter kit when we played it though fairly certain um so just getting to the editing aspect of you know like knowing tabletop and just being the editor behind the scenes so we talked a little bit about um in season one about your experience editing it has there been any like change of experience as compared to season two uh i mean yes and no it's really not it's not that dissimilar from season one i think um Season one, there was a little bit more of me doing some extra artwork and stuff that I didn't really need to do in this uh, this season. So that's a big difference. But otherwise, more or less, the experience has been about the same overall. Uh, you know, a lot of listening, a lot of a lot of rewatching, watching and rewatching and finding finding your best moments for cutting or sound effects, etc. So, yeah, it's it's not not too different, not too different from season one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at least in the visual aspect, we've switched from, you know, like a completely different, like a medieval fantasy world to this like edgy cyberpunk, like real life, well, real life like world place. So, um, so would you like, so you say it's a lot of listening and it's a lot of like listening back and trying to put all the pieces together. Could you give us like what like a day in your life was kind of like working on season two like did you spend a lot of how did you like increment yourself with your time spent well for me whenever i work on something um it's it, it's going to depend on where at in the process we are if i'm starting from scratch on something then it's going to be just a lot of watching over and over and over again mm -hmm. um, probably not even cutting necessarily the first time out just watching, rewatching, deciding where might be a good spot to cut in or what might be a good sound effect to have, writing that kind of stuff down, and then kind of slowly making your way through it in uh, with that in mind. Um, on a given day, if, I, if I've already gotten through some of that and we're working on more of like the actual cutting, then still it's kind of the same you know you you get it started you you probably for me i'll go back to wherever i left off the day before and maybe rewind like five ten minutes to get myself back into the the thick of the story um and see if there was anything that maybe i didn't add before i finished that i want to add now um and then once i've done that i just keep listening through listen to our characters interact uh, if there's like a special moment for a character, then we want to try to highlight that or give them a little close up or something or a two shot if we can. Sometimes it ruins the energy of those scenes to cut into them. So I'll leave them with all like everybody on the screen because it's more fun that way. Um, but yeah, a given day is just a lot of that. 
watching, rewatching over and over again. And then if I am looking for sound effects or finding spots where I want to add sound effects, then uh, I just go through my sound effects library, see if I have anything that fits. Uh, you can spend a lot of time messing with sound effects for stuff like this, honestly, just adding them in and uh, adjusting the levels or adding little effects to make them more accurate to the world that you're in. So it depends. Truly, it depends. Every day is a little bit different depending on where you left off the day before, more often than not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of a day in the life is just watching over and over again, probably taking a break and, you know, cursing yourself for doing the this as a job because it could be tedious, but you still love it. Uh, and then going back into it and hoping, uh, hoping you can do it justice and make it as entertaining as it actually is. Yeah, definitely. It can be very tedious, especially like, you know, voiceover started as a hobby for me. I would do it when I want and it wasn't as taxing as opposed to now, you know, like it's my it's a job now. So like when mm -hmm. your passion becomes your job, it's tough to like balance the two and still have that spark that you had before when it was just your free time. Oh, yeah. um, so uh, what do you kind of do to combat that? Like, is there anything to like, you know, like do you just kind of like no have time to take breathers or just kind of remind yourself like you know this is like yeah my passion. yeah yeah you got to take breaks you got to definitely give yourself breaks and uh step away from the computer a little bit or if you if you're not going to step away from the computer put something on for 20 minutes that's not what you're doing so you can completely distract yourself or just get out of it a little bit um you know Throwing on shows is always an easy one to take a break with. You're just like, all right, I'm going to look at somebody else's work for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that that helps. Lots of breaks helps. Taking the whatever you do with those breaks is up to you. But I like, yeah, just either completely turn off your brain during a break away from whatever you're doing or do something else creative that you want to do instead uh, for that break time so that you you don't feel like you're being stuck in something that you uh you know your job as opposed to your passion mm -hmm. um that's that's usually what i do but lots of breaks step away from the computer go eat food i probably shouldn't eat uh you know the usual distraction methods yeah I, yeah i do the same thing i'm like well <laughs> i should treat myself to something nice and even though like i treat myself all the time and it's just horrible mm -hmm. junk food but mm -hmm. <laughs> do i really want to order food yeah i'm gonna treat myself yeah i'm gonna treat myself do i really should i no but am probably I not <laughs> but i'm gonna what advice i gotta you... sit here <laughs> <laughs> yeah right i gotta sit here but um what advice would you give to somebody wanting to pursue your career if they want to pursue editing specifically, I would just say edit everything you possibly can, even if it's not like, you know, somebody's short or your own movies, rip clips off the internet from shows and see if you can edit them better or funnier or more action packed, whatever you can do to like work on your craft, you should be doing period. If, uh, if you're not good at writing, directing, et cetera, that's, that's what I would do. Take any media you possibly can to edit with. Ask people if they need help editing. Um, if you know people who edit, ask if you can be an assistant editor because that's an easy way to at least learn some of the important basics and uh, get yourself started that way. Um, invest in the programs that people actually use. If you're editing with iMovie and you want to be a serious editor, stop using iMovie. <laughs> uh or windows movie maker get yourself an actual program because otherwise when it comes time to jump to work with more professional things or actual industry things you're going to be a little out of luck because all you know is iMovie or windows movie maker and they're going to be like using premiere or uh avid the the big ones that uh you you really should know how do you feel about just curious how do you feel about luma fusion do you know that one i don't know that one um i i literally i don't even think i've heard of it so i'll have to look into it i mean i could look into it right now and see what comes up but uh hard hard for me to have an opinion about something i don't know about oh, luma no, fusion as okay. an editor. <laughs> luma fusion's a new one that i've been hearing all the 
you know, just like everybody's been talking about it, and it looks a little bit like iMovie, but in a just just in a different font. Hmm. I don't know. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know, all I can say. Oh yeah, I can see it. I'm looking at it now. App of the year. That's bold. <laughs> uh okay well multi-track editors because that's what luma fusion appears to be multi-track editors are what most people should be using mm -hmm. um the iMovie setup i don't know who decided that that was a good setup but i i never have liked it i don't know why people use it I, but if uh, it's easier for some people and it works for you then by all means use it yeah i haven't i haven't <clears> used it so i don't really know what it's really like but yeah <laughs> it just feels so limiting like you don't have a lot of options in comparison or a lot of control over what you can or cannot do uh in in those kind of programs at least in my opinion yeah definitely um so now i'm gonna ask do you have a favorite character in season uh, i don't know because I like I like our cast a lot. Everybody, return cast members, new cast members. So it's it's very difficult to choose because um, they're all so damn entertaining. <laughs> I I don't know if I can pick first season. I don't think I could pick first season either. I really liked Mady Bullhorn in first season. Mm -hmm. uh, in second season, it's a really tough call. <laughs> Because I don't want to be like, oh, I, I, I like one of uh, one of Carmen's characters more than the rest of the cast characters. But, uh... <laughs> I love one of the NPCs. <laughs> I know, right. I know. There's so many good characters. It's There's really a lot of good ones. There's some good ones, to be fair. Um, but I mean, I don't know. Collectively, they're all great. I, I do love our, our cast of heroes as oh, characters. Yeah. Not just as cast members, but as characters They're in the in the series. They're they're very fun. They all have great rich stories that we got to play with so that was that was a good time uh i almost said something very spoilery so i'm glad i didn't <laughs> i was yeah. like wait we're only on episode five i gotta shut up <laughs> okay i was, so like, I was about to be like oh i would say it's so and so because of the twist toward the end of the no i'm gonna keep my mouth yeah, shut. Nope. so sorry everybody gotta keep watching <laughs> all right all right how about we'll this find episode? out would you rather live in night city or the land of your there's a lot of appeal to living in Night City just because of the whole sci-fi aspect that's really enjoyable, but I think maybe Yashan would be arguably more enjoyable because it's it would be less stressful and probably more fun. You'd have a lot less to do, but I I would like to think that arguably Yashan is is slightly safer. You'll see, I've been City. I've been asking everybody this question, and I think most of them have picked Night City. Well, some of you, Sean, because like it's tough because the land of Yushan is nice and safe if you find your right corner, unless there's like right. army of skeletons and dragons. But but you also have cool potions and mythical creatures and Night mm -hmm. City is more of the realism, but it's also like this dark, edgy sci fi. It seems like more dangerous. And you just if you go to the land of Yushan, you have to find the right spot to just sit and live peacefully. <laughs> See, I, I feel like in Yashan, you would have a, a a much better chance of carving out like a little piece of life for yourself, whatever that might look like, peaceful yes. or not. Yeah. In Night City, that feels more like you know a little bit real world. So I feel like that'd be just a struggle all like of the a time. A lot harder, yeah, especially with the high riders. And speaking of oh, the yeah. high riders, let's. I think that is all of our questions for now. So let's dig into our episode recap. So. Speaking of the High Riders, the High Riders are the ones that were on their way to the Benito Ranch in the previous episode. So we left off with our friends in the underground bunker. And they're going to Zigzag's room that she used to have there when she was a kid. Whenever Zigzag would misbehave, Ma would just shove her there, but she always found her way out. And they decide that um, the Benitos are not going to be doing good, especially with the High Riders there. They're going to have to get out of there. But... You know, they take some time in the underground bunker to find weapons and med kits because they are 100% outnumbered with the high riders. So before they leave, they decide that they can't, they just, they just cannot leave Ma, Benito, and Rian. So uh, they just grab everything they can. They grab guns, knives, grenades, and uh, of course, 
of course they head into the kitchen well that's where ma and rian were last seen originally sid was going to go into the dining room to grab some shrimp but i think she has enough <laughs> thinking about food at a time like this i love i love the shrimp inside joke so much the recurring shrimp cocktail and like shrimp joke is great <laughs> <laughs> and it's, pocket just keeps shrimp. coming back pocket <laughs> shrimp yep and so we're left with a pretty intense fight and it almost got to like a death save at one point because there's this guy named the reaper and he was just he was just taking everybody out sid and gizmo got really badly injured and uh the avs they just start lighting up the house and it's just a huge intense blazing fight with just guns and grenades and uh ma Benito decides to do something very interesting because this is a nice thing so that's why everybody was really weirded out and shocked when carmen did a nice thing mm -hmm. <laughs> because like what's well, the catch you're like what's the catch and well you want to know the catch well keep watching because i'm sure there is one so <laughs> ma is going to pull sid and gizmo into the hallway and she's going to give them a healing vial and so sid and gizmo are saved and they almost had to do a death save so thank you carmen but <clears throat> why and the last thing we're left off is they finally they all managed to escape they're headed off in an av to night city but there is another av following close behind see that might be the catch you're alive but catch. <laughs> at what cost at what who's cost? who's chasing you now <laughs> well tune in and find out Scott, thank you so much for being on here and just getting to chat with us. I really appreciate oh, sure. it. And Happy to be you. here. Yeah, thank you all for uh, tuning in and be sure to tune in to next, next week's episode on Monday. Thank you all so much. Bye. See you later, everybody.